The second question was, how has the evolution of media and ICTs improved the opportunities for managing conflict, and what might it take to employ them? So, the takeaway, I think, there was a couple of things. Um, the new tools that we have give us the ability to create and put out there, distribute, distribute our personal stories whereas we didn't have that option years ago. Um, we have blogs, we have YouTube, we have Facebook, we have Twitter, we have all of those things. Um, and it gives us an opportunity. But the other issue is, is that we need to be able to actually create the right content to put out there. Because as we heard yesterday, we have, what is it, Gigo? Garbage in, garbage out. So while we have all these distribution methods, we also need to learn how to tell those stories in the variety of tools that we have in order to get the message out. Um, it used to be, and I've heard this a lot recently, is that a lot of people get overwhelmed by the problems that we face as a, as a world. And the numbers are too big. You can't get your head around the fact that there are 1.1 billion people that don't have enough food or don't have enough water. It's a big number. But now that we can tell personal stories and we can actually share them and they can go out virally, that's now you can put a face to those, to those problems, an individual story to those problems. And that's something that I think we all agree is, the, is a good thing that's come out of the recent um, technology. And as I said, we have um, Gigo. So garbage in, garbage out. We need to learn how to tell those stories better. And media literacy was a big issue. Um, being able to decipher between truth and propaganda, or being able to uh, determine uh, what you need to learn more about and read between the lines, if you will. So those are things I think that we have to work on. And the last question, um, what are some of the obstacles to agencies, organizations, and movements involved in conflict management? in effectively using media and ICTs for their purposes. Unfortunately, this is still a long list as well. And we discussed this in Bali two years ago, and it's still a long list. And uh, here are some of the major things. Access to the internet, still a problem. Um, I think I heard a statistic where two years ago it was 15%, and now it's 25%. We still have 75% to go, but that wasn't bad for two years. <laughs> um, we have corruption, both political and commercial, which uh, doesn't allow for certain things to happen in certain areas. Um, we don't have a money-making model quite yet for some things, so that the corruption, um, you know, can be can be put away, if you if you will. There's. There's not enough models out there that people can say, oh yeah, this is going to make me money. Illiteracy, big problem still in much of the world. Lack of resources, censorship and personal risk, poverty, and media ethics. So if I looked at all of my notes, those were the major categories, I think, that, um, that we covered. So, as I said, two years ago, it was 15%, 25% now have access, so we're, we're doing things in, in giant leaps, but we still have a lot of things to cover and a lot of problems still to, to deal with, but we're, we're, we're working our way through them. Do you have anything else to add since you were a moderator? Um, no, I, I think that you've, you've as, as, as yesterday, you, you've captured um, the uh, the essence of what we, we discussed yesterday, just to, again to, to pick out some of the, the things that we mentioned, starting with the problems, and then we can work towards the, the solutions. There are many, censorship, illiteracy, corruption, and again media access. This seems to be a strand when we're talking about media and ICTs, having in our hearts at all time that many people around the world, in fact a majority of people around the world, don't have the privilege that, that, that many of us do, certainly where I come from in the UK, um, and taking that into account as far as our approach is concerned. Uh, the importance of being able to frame stories, and again, it's a running thread um, in terms of storytelling, 
um, skills for young people in particular and this, this need for education. There are so many opportunities out there um, uh, that media and ICTs have um, provided us to help people engage in conflict management. It is worth saying that the whole term conflict management was brought into question uh, yesterday and I'm sure will continue to be brought up of whether or not the media, ICTs, should, could manage conflict, whether that concept is as meaningful as perhaps conflict resolution. Um, the ability of media and ICTs to help engage, as you said, rather than with 1.1 billion people, through the lens of an individual heart, an individual story, is something that is instilling us in hope and can be that motivation for people to act and engage in conflict situations. Um, and then there was this wealth, we must, I don't know, maybe 50, 60, 100 different wonderful resources, websites, organisations working in this niche field. And it's my sincere hope, and this is a, a call out to the organisers and the, the, the people who built this wonderful website of the Power of Peace Network to put those resources online. And let's be, use that as a framework, as a skeleton, to build a rich body, use all of the wonderful uh, resources and, and knowledges and skill sets in this room, put it out there, and it can be a unique resource. Uh, so thank you again, Nancy, and we'll... Nancy, right?